My name is Zach Meadows, and I'm a running back for Fredericksburg High School in Virginia. I've played football since middle school, but my goal since I started high school was to join the military in some capacity. I grew up in a military family that glorified service. My grandpa fought in World War II, and my dad has been an officer serving in Virginia for over 20 years. I was always a little bit taller than most of my peers, so I usually ended up playing tight end during my freshman and sophomore season, but I was electric with the ball in my hands. It took multiple defenders to bring me down every time, so coach eventually decided that I should try playing running back in my junior season. I was okay at the position, but I had never developed the natural instincts for cutting and finding running lanes. The big difference between my junior and senior season was the amount of muscle I put on. I was getting ready for the Marines and had pre-commit to join once I completed high school, so I was working out with other recruits every week towards the end of my junior year and during the summer. When I came back for practice in the fall, I was shredded. I grew two inches to six foot four, and I weighed 230 pounds. Some of my teammates were scared to tackle me in practice. My running back coach was impressed by how much I had learned about the position during the offseason and with how much better balance I had. He told me that he was going to get our head coach to run the entire offense through me. I told him that I was built for that workload. Coach came to me and asked if I could handle 40 carries in the game, and I told him that I could probably do that. I don't know about every game, but I knew I could do at least a few times during the season if our quarterback was struggling. Not only did we run a lot out of I-form with a blocking fullback, but we even ran some Wildcat, letting me just get the snap and go. The funny thing was that Coach didn't really understand how great I was as a receiver, too. Like I said, I played tight end freshman and sophomore year. I had great hands and my route running was solid. I felt like I could be used as a wide receiver, tight end, or a running back. I don't even know what you'd call that position on the field, but I felt like my versatility was slept on. I wasn't just a power back lowering my head and running dudes over. I mean, I can't lie. I definitely enjoyed that part. My mindset was that it's either me or him with every tackle, and I applied my training from the Marines to my approach towards football. Our second regular season game was against West Springfield, and it was legendary. I started the game with a breakaway 70-yard touchdown, and I never looked back. I was running over defenders, trucking anyone who challenged me in the gaps. My O-line was blocking their butts off, and so were my receivers. I wish we kept track of broken tackles in high school, because I felt like I was averaging two or three per play. A couple of defenders got injured just trying to tackle me. Every play felt like I was getting 20 yards minimum. I think I was playing so hard because I knew my family was watching. Both of my parents were in the stands to watch this game, and I didn't want to disappoint at home. My dad had always been my number one critic when it came to football too. He always thought I could work more on my hand-eye coordination or my lateral quickness or my speed. He knew what my weaknesses were and I listened to him as much as I could. It's hard to have an elite level of quickness with a 6'4", 240 pound frame, but I worked on ladder and cone drills whenever I could. I also practiced in the sand to try to increase my explosiveness. In the second game of the season, I dropped an insane line. I had almost 40 carries, 400 rushing yards, six touchdowns, and four catches for 44 yards. The next thing that happened was also insane. After our game against West Springfield, every regular season game we had left was canceled. I had only ever heard about this on the news, but parents demanded their high school teams cancel their games against us for fear of their kids getting concussions or being injured. So we had six teams forfeit against us, which led us to having an undefeated record before the playoffs. I know two players that we played against in the first two games at least that got concussions trying to tackle me. The canceled games garnered national attention, and I went from being an unknown prospect to being recruited heavily by colleges. Some of the first teams to recruit me were military teams, Army, Navy, and the Air Force. I also received scholarship offers from colleges in the area like UV, Tech, and West Virginia. What really surprised me was when Alabama offered me a full ride as the immediate second string running back. I honestly could not believe it. I never dreamt that I would receive an offer from Bama. We were midway into the playoffs when my parents sat me down and we talked about my options for college or going to the Marines. I think we were all in agreement that I should pursue college at least instead of going straight into the Marines. I could always defer my enrollment now that my college tuition was being taken care of because of my football acumen. Surprisingly, my dad really pushed for me to go to Bama. He said that I had a once in a lifetime opportunity to play for the best team in the nation and potentially make the NFL. Uh, I was still undecided. This was a big change for me from my original plans to enter the military immediately after high school. I started getting recruited by college team fan bases. People really wanted to see me go to Alabama or Wisconsin specifically. They were photoshopping me into jerseys already, and I told my parents that I was going to wait until after the state championship to announce my decision. I didn't want to overshadow my teammates or our success as a team. I owed a ton of my success this season to our amazing offensive line, too. I had become the number one running back prospect in the nation, some even saying that I was the best high school running back recruit they'd seen in a while. There was a lot of hype and the next thing I had to do was back it up. Coming off of our first playoff game, we were already into the semifinals against Newport. Now that we were in the playoffs, I didn't expect any team to forfeit due to injury concerns, and luckily nobody did. 
Every game that we lost due to a forfeit was another game that my teammates and I couldn't put on tape for scouts. After beating Charlottesville, some local newspapers were saying that we were unbeatable with our ground game, while others thought that Newport would easily beat us and maintain their undefeated record with their elite quarterback play. Look, we were in 3A. Dudes were not that big or fast, especially compared to me. Our whole team was on HGH, I mean creatine, so we had a little advantage. We were pulling two-a-days, constantly working on our athleticism. We had the ability to beat other teams purely because of our athleticism, but this game was a little bit different. It was still close in the third quarter at 14-0, and we didn't do much on offense, but our defense was clamping this so-called top-tier QB prospect from Newport. After a field goal and two more big rushing touchdowns from me, we punched our ticket to the state championship. The championship game was hosted at the Virginia Tech Stadium, and they had been recruiting me like crazy as a local product. To start the game, I weaved my way through blockers and defenders on a wildcat play, finding some space and eventually getting a 60-yard touchdown. We were playing against a 7-2 Portsmouth team that scrapped their way to the championship, and I respected it, and I dapped up some of the players before the game, but I also had to talk some shit and let them know that it was coming to a close. Kobe was an idol of mine, and I loved the psychological warfare that he played with teammates and opponents alike. Like I said, I respected the Portsmouth dudes, and they reminded me of myself, but it's an us or them mindset. I'm not taking any chances with this. Sometimes though, you just play out of body and you're just playing off of pure instinct. I was running through dudes, catching balls near my face and taking it through the hole for scores. My teammates were showering me with lemon lime Gatorade. Nah, but for real, we stomped Portsmouth. We put them where they belonged. We were state champions, bro. What a feeling. I finished the game with nearly 400 yards and seven total touchdowns. I celebrated with my teammates all night. The day after the state title, I was ready to make my college decision. It was tough because I had always thought I was going to go to the Marines, but now I'll be going to study at... At my press conference, I made the announcement. So here it is. Time to make the biggest decision of my football career, and I will be committing to the Army. I was grinning ear to ear when my dad looked at me like, what the fuck, son? You just passed on Bama? I went on to say, I'll be playing at West Point, New York. I appreciate all the teams that offered scholarships and all the fans who were recruiting me to come to their school, but my mind had been made up since I was 14. Despite the fact that I may have been the best recruit to ever commit to the Army, I wasn't immediately the starter. I had to earn that role over Tyrell Robinson. Our quarterback, Ty here, Tyler, was actually pretty damn good, too. We weren't in the top 25 to start the season, but we received a crazy amount of hype from the media and fans of college football. Some people thought that we'd finish the season in the top 10, and some thought that I'd break Army's rushing record in my first season. Our first game against Ball State didn't really go as planned, though. We were down by two with time running out on the power return. We'd need a miracle on the power return, and unfortunately, we were not going to get it, as I fell down after only 10 yards, and I finished the game with only four carries for 27 yards in total. I was still playing back at running back in week two against Against Stanford, but it didn't really matter. Our offense featured two running backs and one fullback on basically every single play. It actually gave me an opportunity to play a little bit of tight end, catch some passes, block every once in a while, and get used in the triple option running game. After a slow start against Ball State, we really needed this. Split out at tight end, I ran a great corner route, and Ty here thread the needle, finding me for my first college touchdown. On our next drive, though, we'd run a triple option, resulting in a serious injury to Ty here Tyler after I was tackled for only a one-yard gain forcing Alon Mitchell to fill in at quarterback. Things were still looking up though. We scored another touchdown. Alon Mitchell actually threw a 25 yard dart. The running game was still working, although our option game was a little tougher without Tahir's speed. We found ourselves giving up another late score as Stanford took a four point lead late in the game. We had just 16 seconds to get a touchdown and when your offense is predicated on running the ball, you gotta get pretty lucky. I gave this great field position on the punt return and with 10 seconds left, I got pulled off the field since we were in the gun and Mitchell took a sack and the game was basically over at that point. I finished with 70 total yards my first touchdown. We hadn't lived up to our expectations or our fans' expectations up to this point. We had a chance to turn that around against Wake Forest, though. Wake Forest was 3-0, and and we had no momentum to start this game. I felt like rainy weather would benefit us, but we were a mess on offense without our starting quarterback. Mitchell consistently missed me on option pitches, instead keeping the ball himself for a loss. I only got a few touches in this game, and it was ugly early, as we struggled to find a rhythm, and Forrest took a 24-0 lead over us. The most frustrating thing was that it felt like there was nothing that I could do. I felt like our offense limited what an individual's ability to, con to contribute at a very high level was. My snaps and touches were limited because we rotated so many backs, and our quarterback was also basically another running back. We ended up scoring two garbage time touchdowns that I wasn't a part of, and it made the loss look a little bit more respectable, but there was no scenario in my mind where we'd be 0-3 to start the season. I'd end up with three carries for negative yards. It was another frustrating game against Louisiana Tech. We were down 15 already, and Mitchell refused to pitch me the ball on options. I ran over to the sideline eventually and screamed at him and the coaching staff. It was embarrassing. We had such high hopes for this season, and this program, in one instance, Injury derailed everything. 
I finished the game with four carries for a total of zero yards, meaning that I had seven carries for an average of negative one yards over the last two games. I pulled coach aside and asked him what I needed to do to become the starter, and he told me that if I continued to show leadership as a freshman in the face of these losses, that I'd get the job, considering Tyrell and I were performing about the same. Despite a few nice plays this game, we still took the L to Boston College 24-0, and I finished with only 22 rushing yards. Finally, I got the start against Temple. I thought that there would be a big change in offensive performance, but what I didn't realize is that our run offense was actually bad regardless of who the running back one was. I got all the runs going to one side of the field basically and Tyrell got all the runs going in the other direction. The scheme just didn't fit my skill set either. I was a north and south runner. I don't have crazy loose hips and a very quick change of direction. It's something that I'm still working on so when all of the runs are basically jet sweeps it doesn't let me use my raw strength to run over dudes or stiff arm guys nearly as much since they're running downhill at me. I did still end up with more carries finishing with 11 total touches for 44 yards. At this point our hopes of going to a bowl game this season were mathematically eliminated. Even if we won every game for the rest of the season, we wouldn't get a positive record. At this point, we were just trying to maintain some amount of dignity. We had our rivalry game against Air Force, and to finish the season, we had another game against Navy. Even if we lost every other game, it'd just be nice to beat these teams. At this point in the season, I was definitely questioning if I made the right call to go to the Army. I still wanted to serve my country, but I didn't want to be a part of a program stuck in the past and unwilling to change. I felt like the only thing I could do to really make a difference was to switch to playing quarterback in this offense, and that was something that I definitely thought was outside of my expertise. I sat down with my parents, and when they met me in town for the game against Air Force, I told them that I was wavering a little bit on staying with the Army all four years after we performed this badly, and I wasn't getting enough opportunities or developing as a player. My dad said, God damn it, I knew you should have gone to Bama. I was wondering the same thing, but after the season we've had so far, I'm not sure what team would be interested in giving me a scholarship to come play running back. We had a seven-point lead at Air Force's 20-yard line and somehow went to OT still. We were down seven and had to match them, and on third and goal, I ran my corner route that got me my first college touchdown to perfection, but Alan Mitchell threw it to the back of the end zone, getting intercepted, and we lost to Air Force and gave up the comeback. The first play of the game was an embarrassing option pitch, going backwards 20 yards into our end zone for a safety. At this point, we were just finding ways to lose. I'm not going to lie, despite being a team player, I blamed Alan Mitchell for all of our losses. The dude was a turnover machine and never looked for me as a receiver or on any of our option run plays. I sat down with coach and told him that I respected him in this program, but I was definitely going to enter the transfer portal at season's end. He acknowledged how difficult this season had been on everyone, and I shook his hand and walked out of the office. It didn't mean that my time with the team was over definitively, but I was at least going to explore my options. I felt that I had to let coach know because he had always been transparent with me. We still had a chance to get at least one or two wins this season. Old Dominion was one and nine, and Navy was three and seven at this point. Mitchell scored Dominion's first points for them, though, throwing a flat route that turned into a pick six. I had a few solid runs, and some of my biggest runs of the season in this game. I think our longest play this season as a team might have been a 25 yard gain. That's just how bad we were offensively. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I was honestly sick of this guy at this point. Down 11 in the third, I ran a wheel route that turned into a slant. Mitchell hit me, and somehow the DB didn't get a finger on the ball, and I got another receiving touchdown. Needless to say, we didn't tie the game in under 30 seconds, and we took our 10th L of the season. I had tied my career high for touchdowns in a game at 1, and I broke my record for total yards at 77 in this game. This was our last shot. We had a snow game against Navy, our number one rival. They had three wins this season, and this could be our first. It was a battle to start off. Neither offense could get going, and the defenses were teeing off on runners. We knew each other so well, it made tricking the defense really challenging on both sides. All of a sudden, we finally caught a spark on offense for the first time this season. To my surprise, Alan Mitchell was actually playing really well. Our blocks were holding up, and our lateral runs were actually working in this game. We went into half with a 21-7 lead, and in the third, we continued marching down the field, getting down to the 30 before being stopped and missing a field goal. For the next quarter, Navy boxed up our offense. We did nothing, and Navy got two of their own touchdowns. It was tied 21-21 with a minute left. I had told myself before the game that if we lose to Navy, if we have a winless season, that I was out of here. After picking up a first down, I was pulled off the field, and Mitchell threw a pick. Navy scored a touchdown, and we were back in the same spot we had been so many times this season, down a score with 30 seconds or less left. We lost and I finished with my first rushing touchdown of my college career in our last game. Here's what our team stats looked like. Notice that we were the worst rushing offense in college with one of the highest rushing rates. Yeah, that's pretty bad. 
Let me know in the comments where you'd like to see Zach Meadows go next. In my freshman season with the Army, we finished 0-12. I made it clear that I'd be exploring the transfer portal after that season. I made the decision that would help my family most by transferring to Alabama. In high school, I did get an offer to go to Bama as the RB2, but after my lackluster freshman year, I was relegated to third string to begin my sophomore season at Bama. Our first game was against an FCS team, and we easily took the W, but I got zero playing time. And next, we played FAU, a team that we should easily beat, but I only got two snaps during our game. We got upset in our second game of the season, and I definitely was feeling uneasy about my decision to transfer after that first L. As the new RB2, though, I got zero touches in our game against Arizona State, and we ended up getting the W and improved our record to 2-1. and one. Against Ole Miss, I got only one touch, but it was the most important one of the game. Up seven with a minute left, I punched it in for a touchdown and gave us a two-score lead. That win got us back in the top 25, and our next game was against Texas A&M. Again, as an RB2, I only got one touch, but we did win that game as well. It's hard to say that I earned the starting job for my performance on the field. I mean, I was barely on the field to begin with, but my running back coach was watching me closely in practice lately, and he put in a word that I should start our game against Kentucky since Roy Dell was banged up a little bit. And I immediately went from getting zero touches to getting 20 plus. Again, in high school, I had a ton of 40 carry games, so this workload wasn't a big deal for me. A quote I heard from Tony Allen once was that, if you stay ready, you don't gotta get ready. And so I didn't really need to worry about my endurance in this game, despite getting more touches in this game than I got in the rest of the season combined up to this point. The only thing that was really annoying me is that whenever we got into the red zone near the one or two yard line, they'd pull me out and put Roy Dell back in as the the goal line back. Quick pause, I know most of you guys enjoy these videos, but a lot of you aren't subscribed to the channel, so make sure to go ahead and subscribe to continue to get these career videos and other sort of content that's gonna be coming out in the upcoming months. All right, so we did end up getting the W versus Kentucky, which means that our next game is gonna be coming up against Arkansas. And so now as the 12th rated team in the nation with a five and one record, Arkansas being four and two, this is a battle of two top 20 teams in the nation. And I started ripping off some big runs versus Arkansas. I wanted to make sure that I could gobble up all the balls that Roy Dell Williams was offering. I remember huddling around my teammates midway through the second quarter and my O-line was just telling me that they were like surprised at how much I could take a pounding and I mean, like I said, I can rip off 30 carries in the game for sure. And I never really exploded in this game, but I did have one touchdown at the end of the game, giving us a 20 to three lead. We ended up taking their cheeks. I mean the W. All jokes aside though, we did end up picking the W up, but the weird thing is we actually fell down in the rankings and we fell from 12th to 13th after beating Arkansas. And now we're playing against a four and three Tennessee team. And Jalen Milrow was going crazy. He got one touchdown, those 70 yards to Jermaine Burton. Uh, right before the end of the first half, he found me in the end zone for a touchdown. And we had a 21 to 14 lead with two and a half minutes remaining. I did not do all that much in this game, but then he threw a terrible pick. It almost ended up being a pick six, but the DB did end up getting brought down. Milrow definitely got super lucky though, because we did get a full stop on defense. So we still had the one touchdown lead. I tried to stay in bounds to the best of my ability to run clock as much as I could. We couldn't see the down and distance for whatever reason, but with 30 seconds left I picked up another first down effectively ending the game because Tennessee had no timeouts remaining I didn't have a glorious game but I did have that one receiving touchdown before the end of the first half our next game was against LSU though one of our biggest rivals at three and four they didn't have the best record but you can never sleep on a team like LSU they have a ton of talent and my game against Tennessee admittedly was really quiet I averaged about three yards per carry and I had like 70 rushing yards but against LSU I was breaking off explosive runs again and again or Jalen Milrow was keeping the ball on read option keepers and then this play happened here where I got uh, some great blocks on the outside. I ran downfield. I thought I was going to run over the safety, but the safety just laid me out. I finally got my revenge with about a minute and a half left in the half, scoring my first touchdown of the game. Now, I did mention before that the NIL money was coming up pretty clutch for me, and you might be wondering why that is, considering I do have a pretty stable family, and I do have my family in a military background, so we're, we should be well taken care of. But to be honest, after I left the Army my freshman season, my dad started experiencing some weird symptoms at his job he was feeling pretty sick he couldn't stand up for a long time and so he did end up taking a couple week break from his job in Virginia eventually we found out that he does actually have cancer but the most important thing man is that he found out early got it caught early and that means it's gonna be treatable which is awesome and you know you might be wondering like why am I playing football well of course I got to make sure that I'm getting my NIL money I got to make sure I'm paying for certain things but also my dad said he wanted me to continue to play football he wanted to watch me while he was getting his treatments he wanted to make sure that I continue to chase my dreams and he supported that 100% the thing is though that my dad did say before the season started that he wanted to come to every single game but his health was deteriorating a little bit with his treatment so it was a better option to just have him stay home maybe come to one home game in Alabama just see how that goes but we were getting close to the end of the season with an 8-1 and record playing against Mississippi State and we're down 13-0 in the third quarter man we could get 
get absolutely nothing done. Jalen Milrow was getting boxed, and the running game was getting boxed as well. I was averaging two yards per carry up to this point, and most of the work that I was doing that was positive in this game was catching the football. Going back to my roots as a dual threat, sort of tight end running back type of player out of high school. After a big grab, I got pulled out of the game in the red zone once again, and Roy Dell came in for that cleanup touchdown. We were still down 13-6 with a minute left in the fourth quarter, and Jalen Milrow took a big sack, so now it's third and 14. And on third and 14, he threw it downfield, and we did convert the fourth down, just barely convert the fourth down. And on the very next play, though, Jalen Milrow exposes the cover two defense, finding Ja'Cory Brooks on the sideline for the game-tying touchdown. We go into overtime against Mississippi State, and I end up not really doing all that much. It's kind of the Jalen Milrow show on the completion. And on the very next play, he finds himself some time in the pocket, escapes out to his right side off of a great block by me, by the way, and he gets into the end zone for a touchdown. And when I mean I wasn't doing much in overtime, I really mean I wasn't doing that much. On third and eight, it's a crucial third down conversion, and I have the easy first down pickup, but I spin it out of bounds, and then we try to kick the field goal on the next play, and we miss it. I was absolutely heartbroken. Mississippi State comes out with the victory over us. That had to have put us in a slump because we were down 14-3 at half against Old Minion, and Coach opted to go for it with three seconds left instead of taking the field goal, probably because of what happened last game. I started to get it going in the second half, and I was wearing down their defense, and we were starting to click offensively. With two minutes left in the fourth quarter, I got a toss on the outside of the right side, scored the touchdown, putting us back within the game within three points. Our defense came up clutch and got us the ball back with a minute left, but Coach's play calling was a little bit suspect. On third down, he called a draw that Old Dominion sniffed out immediately, and then on fourth down, Milrow threw a prayer up and that got picked off and we took the biggest L of the season. Our next game had to be one of the biggest rivalries in sports, the Iron Bowl. Auburn was only 4-7, and seven, but we've actually lost to worse teams this season and historically we've lost to worse Auburn teams. What I'm trying to say is that we couldn't take them lightly and at the beginning of the second quarter it was still 0-0. Zero to zero. Milrow was struggling and so was I. It's weird how even when you're not playing well, sometimes you can still get the ball down the field because we were just barely converting third downs, picking up the least amount of yards possible to keep the drive going. Going. And Milrow ended up capping off that drive with a touchdown. And on the very next drive, with a minute remaining, we were driving down the field, and Milrow found again Robbie Oots for his second passing touchdown of the game. Auburn did score one more touchdown, but on third and seven, all I needed to do was pick up this first down. I couldn't do it, but we did end up winning the game regardless. And we did end up making the SEC championship game against number seven, Georgia. Before playing Georgia, I basically didn't think that I could be stopped from running the football. Had I been shut down in the past this season? Maybe, but I never felt shut down. In this game, on the other hand, Georgia's linebackers were playing the run insanely well. They had the speed to sit back in coverage or even drop back and get back in time to destroy a halfback draw. Normally, I felt like I could wear the defense down, but I actually felt like they were wearing me down. Every time I went down, I had three guys tackling me. I was getting a helmet to the thigh, or I was getting crushed by a 400-pound lineman, or I was getting DBs running full steam with no blocks coming from my wide receivers. I respected that coach wanted to continue to use me despite how much we were struggling, but I actually don't think it was the play. I wasn't losing confidence, but we just couldn't do anything right. Georgia was coached better and just had better talent. It was just a fact. We were somehow still in the game at the end of the third, just down 14 to seven. I think my biggest run of the game came off of a read option for about a nine yard carry. And with 16 seconds left in the third quarter, I had a short out that got immediately blown up by multiple linebackers. And we were midway through the fourth quarter at this point, down by 10 points. We were still in it for sure, but we just could not muster any points. I definitely felt bad letting the defense down because they did their part in this game, but we just could not offensively. But on fourth and inches, I do end up barely picking up the first down to keep this drive alive. And on second and 10, though, Jalen Milrow throws a really suspect pass into double coverage. It gets intercepted, and that effectively ended the game for us. And we just had to move on to bowl week. After coming off the SEC championship game lost to Georgia, we were definitely hanging our heads. Nothing pissed Coach Saban off more than losing to Kirby Smart. On a more positive note, though, we were playing against Tech in our bowl game. We had fallen outside the top 25, but if you're not competing for a national championship, then what are you even worried about? The nice thing was that my parents were finally able to come to a game this season since they got tickets with some of my extended family that were also Virginia Tech fans. My dad was looking healthy despite his recent diagnosis, and he told me in the stands before the game that I shouldn't worry about him. If anything, I should play even harder for him. If it wasn't clear already, my dad that is absolutely my idol. Seeing how he was fighting gave me the strength to run through a wall for him. But with three minutes left and down three points, we still only had 90 yards on offense. It was also a surprise that Coach Saban completely stopped running the ball. We ran a screen that picked up a few yards while I was mostly used as a diversion. After I fell over, Robbie Oots took this pass and got near the 50 yard line. With a minute 40 left near the 50, I got the ball for an eight yard pickup going out of bounds just barely. And on fourth down, we ran a halfback screen with me off of the field with a minute remaining. Tech was all over it and we 
we ended up losing the game. So it was an unceremonious finish to the season for us. We ended up going one and five in our last six games, but I guess at least it wasn't 0 and 12, right? Junior year, there were no excuses. I was an upperclassman, I knew the system, and I got one more year of practice with my quarterback, Jalen Milrow, in my offensive line. I set a goal for myself to win the Heisman this year. Our season opener came against Wisconsin, and on the first play, I got the snap in Wildcat and took it 80 yards for the touchdown. Wisconsin was the only other team that I considered going to besides Bama and the Army while I was in high school, mostly because of the Jonathan Taylor comparisons. Weirdly, we're not even close to the same type of player, though. With a one-score lead late in the game, Coach Saban looked to me to choose clock at the end of this game. We needed to prove that we were better than 17th in the nation. I couldn't remember the last time that Alabama was ranked that low to start a season. I'd been working on my burst in the offseason and mostly working on my 40 time getting ready for the draft and I outran everyone to the end zone to give us a two score lead and put the game away. Up next, we had what should have been a really easy game against Miami of Ohio, and Jalen Milrow is going to take it himself on the option keeper, and we're going to get in the red zone and find Robbie Utz for a touchdown early in the second quarter, but we looked up again, and in the beginning of the fourth quarter, we were down 14-7 to to Miami of Ohio, and we finally got back into the red zone with about four minutes remaining. I nearly picked up the first down on this run, and I did get pulled off the field. We scored a touchdown, but Miami of Ohio got a field goal with a three-point lead with 20 seconds left. We would have to make something crazy happen on the halfback screen it went absolutely nowhere and on the next play we ran four verticals and i called for the ball underneath didn't really matter anyways there's only about three seconds remaining and they intercepted it and we took a huge loss to miami of ohio probably hurting our chances of potentially making the college football playoffs this season and potentially hurting my chance of winning a heisman as well next week we had a tough game against a and they were one-on-one -on -one as well but they were ranked above us it was zero to zero in the second quarter before milrow threw a dot to kobe prentice to give us a seven to zero lead I ad-libbed on a route, getting us into field goal range before the end of the first half, and then late in the third quarter, I would have my best player in this early part of the season. I would take a screen all the way for a touchdown, dragging a Texas A&M defender into the end zone with me. Got the call from Coach Sabino again to end the game, up 10 and run the ball down their throats, and no, we're not going to go there this time, but up 17-7, to we ran the ball all the way down to the 5-yard line, effectively ending the game, giving us the W, and now ranking us as the number 21 team in the country, which is still way too low, but we played our next game against Colorado. Colorado State and I was just bouncing off of defenders. I couldn't get into the end zone so I got pulled off the field on second down and we scored again. It was really irritating me that I wasn't getting goal line snaps despite my talent and build and for me personally it also hurt my aspirations of winning the Heisman potentially. After Miller got picked off we were down three in the fourth and I was already getting flashbacks to our game against Miami of Ohio. I decided to take it in my own hands and got us down to the 20 yard line before getting pulled off the field again and we scored another touchdown with me off of the field. We were up 21 to 17 at this point with two minutes remaining and I finally got into the end zone for the first time of the game. I didn't get pulled off. And you can see here that Jamarian Miller really got all of the goal line snaps. I still had a really solid game though, and our next game came against Ole Miss, who is ranked sixth in the nation despite only playing two games up at this point, while we had already played four. We definitely thought that they were pretenders, and we came into the game with that mindset. That being said, we found ourselves down 7-0 in the third, and with nothing going on offensively. Midway through the fourth, we were already down 14-0, and the game was nearly over. I think Ole Miss thought that they had this game wrapped up, but we never lost that same mindset that we had. And I scored our first touchdown of the game, and with a minute remaining, we were only down by seven, but Things were not looking great. Jalen Noro took a sack, and on the next play on a halfback counter, I lost a couple of yards, but they did call a face mask, putting us basically into the red zone. And a few plays later, we were in the red zone, and Jalen Noro finally scored a touchdown, giving us a 14 to 14 game with 20 seconds remaining. We go into overtime. We don't pick up the first down on third down, but Ole Miss actually missed their field goal on their first possession. And so we walked out with a crazy comeback W, and the play of the game was me getting into the end zone for our first touchdown of the game. Ole Miss fans were shocked, throwing bottles and trash onto the field, but we did not care. We were celebrating midfield, getting this huge W over Ole Miss, surely was going to put us in the top 10 again. But in fact, we would actually go into our next game ranked 16th in the nation with a 5-1 record against Arkansas. First play of the game, I ran for 40 yards, putting us into the red zone, and then on third down, eventually Jalen Nora found Kobe Prentice streaking over the middle of the field for a touchdown to get us a 7-0 lead early in the first quarter. Also, a quick note about my dad. He's doing great, and after last season, he went into full remission, and he's actually looking really healthy. Later this season, he's going to come to a game against Virginia, along with a bunch of our other extended family. My dad told me that he was super excited to see me play in person, and he was really happy that I was the starting running back at Bama instead of sticking it out with the Army and probably ruining my football career. It really is great to have parents who support you either way, and they let you make your own decisions. We were still only up 14-0 with a minute remaining in the first half before Jalen Milrow threw this absolute dot to Kobe Prent 
Fuentes, and Kobe took it all the way down to the one yard line before being tackled, but that was actually great for me because I was able to get an easy touchdown from the one yard line. So we were up 21 to seven at the beginning of the third quarter, and I had another explosive run, again, trying to get another stiff arm off, taking it for 43 yards. And with three minutes remaining, I found the end zone once again, getting my second rushing touchdown of the game. And we were up 28 to 21 with a minute 53 remaining. We picked up another first down and effectively ended the game. And what was absolutely wild was that after winning that game against Arkansas, we went from number 16 in the nation down to number 17 off of a W. It was hard to argue to be higher after watching that first play of the game though. And we were down 21 to seven with 20 seconds left in the third quarter. And I was getting absolutely boxed apart from the one touchdown I scored with about four minutes left in the fourth quarter to give us only a seven point deficit. But Tennessee did score another touchdown. Jalen Milrow got sacked on fourth down. And we were down two scores with about two minutes remaining. We did get the ball back and Jalen Milrow threw an absolute dot down the field to Kobe Prentice, giving us only a seven point deficit once again. And we got the ball back somehow with 10 seconds remaining. And Jalen Milrow does it again, throwing it on the outside finding his receiver all the way for another touchdown with no time left. Kobe Prentice taking it 70 yards to make it 28 to 28. What an insane comeback. But on the option on third down, we lose yards and we end up missing the field goal and Tennessee walks out with the win. So despite an amazing comeback, we end up with the L and I feel bad for Jalen Melrose who had an absolutely insane performance in the second half of the game. It was finally time for our game against Virginia with my whole family watching from the sidelines. My teammates and coaches knew how much this game meant to me, especially since my dad would be healthy and to come to the game. I was fired up to play back in my state with a bunch of friends and high school teammates coming to the game as well. Despite how excited for the game I was and despite how well I had been playing all season, I wasn't really the star of the game. After Jalen had that crazy game against Tennessee, he had another elite performance against Virginia, but as a runner. He was snatching up a lot of my yards on scrambles and read option quarterback keepers. Jalen shocked everyone with his scramble midway through the third for a touchdown. It seemed like the Virginia defense was keying in on me specifically, given that there was so much news about me returning home for this game on Twitter and in the newspapers. Every time I ran it, there were two or three defenders waiting on it. After that completion, we had essentially won the game, and Jalen Milrow finishes the start of the game while I finished with 10 total yards on offense, 20 rushing and negative 10 receiving. Our next game came against LSU, and it wasn't going to be as important to me personally, but it was definitely important to our opportunity to potentially play in the SEC championship game. Even though I had a 10-yard performance, I was still in the top five for the Heisman based on my efficiency running the ball and my effectiveness as a receiver. I knew if I wanted to keep that, I would have to turn it around against LSU. We were tied 7-7 at the beginning of the second quarter when I rushed in for my first touchdown of the game, and down 17-14 to 14 at half, I almost broke away for a touchdown with 10 seconds remaining in the half, but I couldn't quite do it. But on a halfback screen, I had some great blocks in front of me, and I took it for a huge gain down to the 35-yard line. Later in the fourth quarter, out of the backfield, Jalen Milrow found me almost for a touchdown, falling down right at the one-yard line, but I immediately ran it in on the next play for a touchdown, giving us the double over LSU and somehow at 8-2 and two, we still weren't in the top 25 but we were playing our next game against Mississippi State who was number 14 in the nation and this would be our opportunity to sweep the Mississippi teams having already beaten Ole Miss at number 6 earlier in the season. I scored my first touchdown of the game and finally I felt like I was getting the respect of the coaching staff finally getting those goal line touches I had been wanting all season. Later in the third quarter Jalen Miller threw a really suspect deep ball that got intercepted and brought back to nearly the 50 yard line but it ended up not really mattering as we did end up sweeping the Mississippi teams and I ended as the player of the game with 20 carries for 80 yards and a touchdown. Our next game was the last of the regular season against Auburn. Of course, the classic Iron Bowl. We had beat them in the previous season and we were now ranked as the number 19 team in the nation. In the Iron Bowl, you need your star players to show up and Jalen and I absolutely showed up. He found me on the halfback screen and I did the rest following my blockers and taking it all the way for a touchdown. But Jalen did a lot of the work himself too. He was eviscerating the Auburn defense. With 40 seconds left before half, he found Robbie Oots streaking down the seam for a touchdown to give us a 21 to seven lead. And what's even more insane is we got the ball back with a second left and he did it again on the very next play for another touchdown to give us a 28 to seven lead before half. Up 28 to seven, yet again, Coach Saban was calling on me midway through the third quarter to basically end this game running the football. And I basically did that, just running over multiple defenders on each play and finally getting the end zone, taking a 35 to seven lead and having an all around great performance, two total touchdowns and 160 all purpose yards. Our next game was the SEC championship against Georgia and we wanted that revenge badly and I know that coach Saban wanted it as well. The main difference for us was that Jalen Milrow and I had gotten so much better offensively from our sophomore 
to our junior seasons, and I say that just as I ended up fumbling the ball with a minute left in the first half, down 14 to three. But guess who also got better this season? Georgia did. Georgia was 12-0, the number one team in the nation, so they were even better than they were last season. And with two and a half minutes remaining, they were up 35-10 to 10 on us, and the game was basically over. Probably the most upsetting part was that we didn't even give ourselves a chance at the end of the game to actually get back in it and potentially win it. We were down at the end of the first half, and we never had a shot of coming back into the game. And I did not have a great game. It was probably my second worst game of the season. With my worst game probably coming against Virginia, we were up 14-0 early against Wake Forest in the Chick-fil-A Bowl, but the good thing was that my family got to come to this bowl game just like they did last season, and we were up by quite a bit before the end of the first half, but with three seconds left, I had a chance to basically put the game away, catching the ball underneath and taking it all the way down to the 10-yard line before getting shoelace tackled. Wake Forest puts in a difficult third and six, but we were able to pick up the first down and basically end the game up 21-14 to with 20 seconds left. We walked off the field with the victory, but none of us were really happy because we had much higher expectations for ourselves, but I did end up having a good game and I finished the season with about 1,500 rushing yards and about 300 receiving yards. After not winning the Heisman last season, I felt disrespected. Preseason, all SEC picks came out, and I was the second halfback behind Jake Frederick, a sophomore running back from Georgia, and Judkins from Ole Miss. Well, you already know what's going on. What if I told you that we lost the first three games of the season and we had a shot to make the college football playoffs? Let's find out. Our first game came against Michigan State, and fall was in the air, and a new era of Alabama football was getting ready to begin with Jalen Milrow and me leading the team as seniors this year. I had put on more weight, and I had gotten even stronger and even faster than my junior year when I was going for the Heisman. And I don't care what anyone says, you have to be going for the Heisman to win the Heisman, if that makes sense. You don't just stumble into winning the Heisman. It takes a specific effort to reach that level of individual success, and sometimes it does come at the cost of team success. It was 7-7, seven to seven, and I was already on a roll when I called for a ball in the flats, and I got laid out and I ended up fumbling the ball and Michigan State recovered and that was our second turnover of the game already. On our next drive, Milrow found Kendrick Law for a touchdown from 20 yards out. Fast forwarding to the end of the third quarter, our offense was getting clamped by the Spartans. We were down a score when Milrow dropped a 50 yard bomb on the Michigan State secondary to tie the game. With one minute remaining, we had a chance to win the game, but on third and one, I couldn't convert. Michigan State scored, and we had only 10 seconds left to tie the game to go into overtime. I got tackled going out of bounds, and then I got pulled out for the last play of the game. And unfortunately, the ball got tipped in the air by a Michigan State defender on a last second Hail Mary by us. It actually fell into a receiver's hands, but he couldn't hold on to it, and we ended up losing to Michigan State. And our next game was against Clemson. Some of you might be familiar with my body of work as a running back, but I can guarantee you haven't seen anything like what I'm gonna be doing this year. What was my one weakness out of high school as a running back? I wasn't quick or agile. I've been doing drills nonstop to work on that agility and it's paying dividends in my senior season. I'm shiftier than ever before, moving like Barry Sanders in a 6'4 body. After that touchdown, we had a 14-7 lead over Clemson that vanished by the fourth quarter. We were down by four and on second and four, I put the team on my back, shoving defenders out of the way as I got us down to the 30. I got pulled off the field and we scored another touchdown to take a three point lead, but with two minutes left, we had the game in our hands, but Milrow got strip sacked in the pocket and Clemson returned it for a TD. We were in the same situation as last game, blowing a lead late and having to scramble last second to win the game. Milrow came up clutch though after that turnover, finding Kobe Prentice for a 40 yards, making it look easy. I could only watch from the sidelines as I got pulled off the field for Jamarian Miller on third down. Jalen Milrow scrambled for three yards and instead of using our timeout, the offense sprinted to the line and snapped the ball immediately. Nobody got open and Clemson was ready for Milrow to run outside the pocket again and he got sacked immediately and that was the game. It was a heartbreaker to lose that game against the number three team in the nation the way that we did when we had the win in our hands. Morale was low around the team after the game, but it was my job to bring the energy, and that's exactly what I did to start our game against Arizona. I was breaking off of tackles, bouncing off of guys, and trying to assert my dominance over the Arizona defense. But I felt like I was the only one with my head in the game. Milrow threw a pick in the flats that almost turned into six for Arizona, but I hustled my ass over and brought the DB down like DK Metcalf chasing Buda Baker. Fortunately for us, they didn't score on their possession, so we still had a chance to win. I got pulled off the field to get us to 14 points, but we got the ball back with a minute left and down by three, and Jalen Milrow came up clutch, delivering a perfect ball to Kendrick Law, who almost took it all the way, but got brought down near the 20 yard line. We were already in field goal range and had a chance to go to overtime, but Jalen Milrow threw a ball on second and six into double coverage Bruh. that got intercepted and effectively ended our chances of winning this game. And we walked out with our third consecutive loss. And to make matters even worse, my mom told me that my dad had been having some troubling health problems for a few weeks. I broke down because I felt like before the season, this was gonna be my best year and I was excited for everything that it had in store, but it had gone to sh so you might be wondering, how could this team still have a chance to make the college football playoffs? Well, buckle up. 
Shortly after finding out my dad was sick, he called me and told me that the cancer had returned. He said he was still feeling good and he was fighting like me every day on the field. He told me that he wanted to come to Alabama from Virginia and hang out with me and help me train during the season and that made me feel a lot better because otherwise I wasn't going to be able to get my mind off of his health when I couldn't see him. Once he came to Tuscaloosa, we ran our own side practices and he told me that he didn't care about me getting a degree. He knew that I was smart. He just wanted me to make the league and he wanted me to win the Heisman too. I asked him how he was doing and he said that he was getting treatment down here in Tuscaloosa and that he would be just fine. But he he wasn't just fine. I noticed that he was looking a lot thinner and doing simple things made him really tired. This man used to do drills with me only a few years ago and now he had a tough time walking up the stairs. Getting back to the game, I was having a good game against Ole Miss and it was taking two or three defenders to bring me down but sometimes that can lead to injury. I got nearly killed and turned into a Beyblade on this play as I flipped around in the air and somehow I came out uninjured and I got really lucky. Later in the drive, I got us into the end zone for our third touchdown of the game to give us a four point lead and with three minutes left, we were running the clock out but I stupidly went out of bounds and luckily that didn't hurt us too much as we ended up picking up a first down and I almost got into the end zone. We walked out with our second dub of the season and Ole Miss fans were shocked but I'm not really sure why because they were 0-3. After our game against Ole Miss I got a call from my mom and my dad had been admitted to the hospital. I was freaking out. I dropped everything to go see how he was doing. I showed up and he was there with my mom talking and laughing like he was just fine. I told him that I was worried about him and he said I had more important stuff to do right now than worry about him and that he was going to be just fine. He ended up getting released from the hospital later that day and was sent home with some medication. We were in the midst of the season and Heisman rankings were just starting to come out. I felt like I had a pretty great resume with over 100 yards per game, averaging nearly two touchdowns and five and a half yards per carry, but my receiving had dropped off a little bit and I wasn't really getting used as a receiving threat. I was mostly used as a pass blocker on passing downs because I was a really solid blocker, but I didn't feel like it was using all of my skills. Anyways, point being, I was on the list of the top five for the Heisman. I guess that made sense. The team hadn't had a lot of success in the first half of the season, but every Everything changed after our win over Texas A&M. They were ranked number six in the nation and beating them moved us up to number 21 in the nation with a three and three record behind my superstar performance. We had some momentum after winning three straight and it felt like we could win any game. If you look at those three losses to start the season, we led every game in the fourth quarter before losing. We should have been undefeated, but we just couldn't close out games at the time. But I think we had figured that out. For being one and five though, Arkansas was putting up a fight. Milrow found Isaiah Bond in the corner of the end zone to tie the game up, but we were silent on offense until the beginning of the fourth when I punched it into the end zone to break the drought and put us back within three. With a minute remaining, we were going to put the game away, but Milrow got tackled for a loss, making us kick a field goal to tie the game instead. Our defense came up clutch though, forcing a turnover near midfield with 30 seconds left to give us a chance to win in regulation. And Milrow found me over the middle, and I put three or four defenders on skates to get us into realistic field goal range. But six seconds left, we wanted to kick the beat a little bit closer, and I got out of bounds with two seconds left. We made the field goal, coming back from down 10 in the fourth quarter, and I finished as the player of the game, this time putting up some great receiving stats after I complained about not getting the ball in Enough. After our close win versus Arkansas, we barely moved up in the rankings, but I started to get mentioned in the Heisman conversation again. My dad, despite getting more fatigued lately, was still helping me train in the afternoons. A draft scout approached my family and told us that I was looking at a late first round projection at running back, and my dad was ecstatic. I hadn't seen that energetic in weeks. I was really happy about the projection, but I felt like I could finish even higher with the way that the season was starting to play out. That being said, we're going to go ahead and forget that that Wildcat pitch happened against Tennessee. Luckily, I had gained enough confidence from my coaching staff to be able to make some unique plays from time to time, but that one definitely shortened the leash a little bit and put us into a 14 point hole to begin the game. I made up for it midway through the second, getting us into the end zone to tie the game 14 to 14, but we were down by three still with a minute remaining in the first half when Jalen Milrow took matters into his own hands, scrambling for 40 yards down to Tennessee's side of the field. He followed that up at the end of the first half by scrambling again outside of the pocket, fighting through multiple defenders and getting into the end zone for another touchdown. Like I said, Jalen Milrow and I were the leaders of this team and sometimes it's the Milrow show. I was having a pretty damn good game too aside from that pitch six earlier but I went down on a run midway through the third injuring my shoulder which was pretty rare for me at this point and I didn't return until there was only one minute left in the fourth and we were luckily still up by three points but I was on a halfback screen on fourth and five because we decided to go for it and I only had one man to beat and I was able to pick up the first down and we were able to run the clock out and beat Tennessee in Tennessee. After our win though we still hadn't moved up the rankings at all with our next game against one of our biggest rivals in LSU. By this point I had been in continuous contact with a few possible agents and finally set on a guy named Andy Hardwick and he had assured me that I was getting drafted in the early first at this point with my level of production comparing my senior year performance to that of Jonathan Taylor, B. John Robinson, and Derrick Henry. I made the decision finally to commit to the draft. For those of you who don't know, I have always considered going to the Marines or to the Army for four years after finishing my time at Alabama, but with my dad's health and with how everything is going this season, I was okay with foregoing spending four years in the military despite the history of our family's military service. Getting back to the game, 
game, we were down by three with a minute remaining in the first half when Jalen Milrow found Kobe Prentice for an 80 yard bomb to get into the end zone and give us a lead before the end of the first half. Early in the third quarter, I ran a short out and got laid out by two defenders, getting my legs taken out from underneath me. Luckily, again, I remained uninjured. I don't know what to credit my durability to, but somehow I stayed on the field. And at the beginning of the fourth quarter, I ran us into the end zone after I ran over a couple of LSU defenders. Late in the fourth quarter, we had this game in the bag. I caught another first down, and with a minute remaining, I was basically just running the clock out, picking up another first down, and that would be the game. We'd walk out of LSU with a big W. The team is super excited, and our next Next game was against Mississippi State. Finally, after beating LSU, we started to get some recognition as a team, moving up from number 20 in the nation to number 17 with a 6-3 and three record. We were already up by 7 when I snatched the hearts out of the Mississippi State defenders, breaking off a tackle and then taking it for 30 yards before being knocked out of bounds. I was pulled off the field for our next touchdown, and we would roll to another victory, capped off by a final drive in which I broke a few more tackles before falling into the end zone. I'd moved up to being in serious conversations of breaking the top five for the Heisman candidates, and our next game would be the greatest chance I've ever had to prove myself as one of the greatest running backs to ever lace them up in college. I definitely hadn't forgotten Jake Frederick being put as the preseason all-SEC running back over me, and we'd been beaten down by Georgia in the previous two SEC championship games, but after moving up to number 10 in the nation with a 7-3 and record, we were at equal footing with Georgia, who shared the same record. Finally, I'd have one more chance to finally get revenge against the team that's ruined our season a few times. And Jalen wanted that too, delivering a beautiful ball over the top to Isaiah Bond, who scored before the half to give us a 27 lead. Georgia scored on their next drive, and Nick Saban felt pressure to go for it on Georgia's 30 on 4th and 16, and it ended up being picked off, so it was basically an arm punt. On our next drive, we got to the red zone, we were stopped for a field goal, and Georgia was creeping closer, getting another score to make it a two-point game. With two minutes remaining, we just had to make Georgia waste their last few timeouts. They had two timeouts remaining, and we were running the football trying to pick up first downs and on third and two Jalen Miller ran a play action and luckily found our tight end for a two yard gain to give us a first down and we walked away with our first win in the last three years against Georgia. And will you look at that, we're playing against our number one rival, Auburn, and we have moved up from number 10 in the nation to number five with an eight and three record. I never thought I would see the day that we would be the number five ranked team in the nation after losing our first three games of the season. But this team was fighting like crazy. And the last thing we have to do is stop Auburn from ruining this run. My dad was probably the most excited about the fact that we moved up to number five. And despite the fact that we had stopped training together because he was getting too tired, he was rooting for us in person at this game. I was gonna leave it all on the line on this game for my dad, for my teammates, and for my coaches. And I said that as I was getting arm barred into the turf on a catch, but even a hit like that wasn't gonna stop me. I was seeing red. I just wanted to cap the season off so bad. My four years of college are culminating in the chance to go to the college football playoffs and potentially win the Heisman at the same time. We scored our second touchdown while I was off the field, but the third one I ran in for a 20 yard carry. And look at this, my ability to break off tackles and it takes six or seven defenders to finally bring me down with three minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. This game is over, but I'm not willing to end it just quite yet. With a minute 40 left after we score a field goal, I break off a couple more tackles, taking it for almost another first down carry, but we're not done yet. We could just run the clock out. Auburn only has one timeout left, but I run the football again, breaking off some more tackles, picking up another first down, and I get some great blocks to get me into the red zone on this play, and I almost get into the end zone, getting down at the 10 yard line, and with a minute remaining, I run it out to the left. I only have one man to beat, and I get into the end zone for another score, and we walk out with a huge victory over Auburn, and I had 31 carries and 280 rushing yards and two touchdowns, and our next game is the SEC Championship against Vanderbilt, and on the first play of the game on Wildcat, I take it all the way for a touchdown. The real question is, how could you not give me the Heisman at this point after the last two games to cap off this season? You might have noticed that after our win against Auburn, we did not move up in the top five, and that's because two Pac-12 teams are in the top five, which is really strange, but hopefully the two of them will have to play in the Pac-12 championship this week. As long as we get to the number four spot, we could be in the college football playoffs. Again, both of my parents are at this game to watch the game against Vandy. And kind of just like every other game this season, we took an early lead but found ourselves down a score in the third quarter. And that quickly ballooned to being down by two scores in the fourth with only four minutes left in the game. I knew my impact would be limited if we didn't score quickly because we'd start to pass the ball every play. And I wanted to have full control over this game. So I made probably the best play of the season so far 
and it wasn't for a touchdown, it wasn't for more than 40 yards, but getting past two Vandy defenders and getting out of bounds was huge to put us in position to score. And I showed everything that I could do on this drive. On the very next play, I caught it underneath and took it all the way for a touchdown with two and a half minutes remaining. We got the ball back with a minute and 40 seconds left, but Jalen Milrow took a sack and it was second and 15 and things were starting to look ugly. On third and 15 though, Jalen Milrow finds our tight end for a first down pickup, getting us past the 50 yard line. I got another chance to run the football and only picked up a couple yards before being pulled off the field. And with 25 seconds left on third and seven, I could hardly watch, but we got to the end zone for a touchdown to tie it. And that took us to overtime against Vandy. And I picked up some more yards, but luckily Vanderbilt actually missed their field goal. And we walked off with a huge comeback victory, being down two scores in the fourth quarter. And I had a massive game with three total touchdowns and 230 all purpose yards. And we hoisted the SEC championship trophy for the first time in my three years at Alabama. The only thing that was a little disappointing was that I didn't even finish in the top five for the Heisman, despite having nearly 2000 rushing yards and 20 plus touchdowns. What was even more disappointing was the fact that we didn't move up past number five after our win versus Vandy. The two Pac-12 schools had already played each other earlier on in the season and they were in the same division. So they didn't play each other in the Pac-12 championship game either. I think we definitely should have made the top four anyways, but we ended up playing against number seven, Texas. I felt like I let my dad down after not making the college football playoffs, but he told me that he was super excited to come to the Sugar Bowl anyways. Both of my parents were supposed to be at the game, but I didn't get a chance to see them before it started. I walked in for my first score of the game, and then I was already breaking ankles, picking up big yards, up to 80 rushing yards early in the first half, and then Jalen Milrow made an uncharacteristic mistake, not sliding, instead taking a big hit, and he ended up fumbling, and Texas recovered. And they did end up scoring off of that turnover, and then on the following drive, Jalen Milrow kind of made up for it, making a 30-yard bomb to Kendrick Law, but we didn't end up scoring once we got down to their side of the field. Jalen Milrow, again, escaping outside of the pocket, didn't learn his lesson from the first fumble, didn't end up fumbling on that possession though, and then eventually scored a touchdown, passing it to Isaiah Bond right before the end of the first half. Since it was a bowl game, we had a little leniency with using our phones in the locker room, and at halftime, I saw that my mom had texted me, and she said that dad wasn't doing great, so they had to leave early, and that freaked me out a little bit. I texted her back and asked her what's wrong, and she said that dad wanted me to focus on playing the game and not to worry. He'd be watching, just not in person. I didn't really know what to think at this point, but she said we would talk after the game, and we were up by three points with two minutes left in the game, and it was fourth and three, and luckily, Texas did not score. With a minute and a half remaining, Texas had only one timeout left, and luckily, I stayed in bounds, but we walked away with the victory, winning by three points over Texas, and I finished the season with 2,000 rushing yards. I checked my phone after the game, and I got the one thing I didn't want to see. My mom told me that I should meet her at the hospital after the game. The night of our game against Texas, my dad passed due to complications from his cancer treatment. A week later, we held his funeral, and immediately after, I decided to enlist in the Army. My dad wanted me to make it to the NFL, and I was still going to do that, but if I didn't enlist right now, then when would I? So I went to basic, and the only overseas deployment I ever saw in my four years was in Japan, where I met my current girlfriend. I decided to leave the military after my four years, and finally enter the NFL draft to honor my father, Bradley Meadows. It was a little unusual to see a 26-year-old rookie enter the NFL draft, but Stetson Bennett paved the way. Actually, though, is anyone ever going to mention how a 30-year-old quarterback named Brandon Whedon got drafted in the first round by the Cleveland Browns. I thought based on those predecessors, I had a chance of getting drafted in the first, still just based off of my senior year. I had put on a little bit more muscle, but I hadn't lost any quickness at 26 years of age. I saw the first few picks come off the board, and then I saw the first round end without my name being called. Ben Jones was the first running back to go off the board, and he went to the Ravens. I ended up being the third running back off the board, and I got picked 15th in the second to go to the Colts. There was a mixture of sadness, confusion, and excitement about that pick for me. Sadness because I wasn't able to experience this with my father. Confusion because I didn't understand how I would fit with Jonathan Taylor on the team still. And then excitement, obviously, because I had achieved one of my dreams, and it was time to get to work. I decided to wear number 88 because I was told with Jonathan Taylor still on the roster, I'd be sort of a joker type of player, moving between tight end, fullback, and running back. I was doing really well in training camp before the season began, and I was excited to prove myself to Shane Steichen and the rest of the coaching staff, but in our first game against the Bears, I showcased all of my skills and made a few splash plays. I had some solid runs, and I had one big chunk play lining up on the outside at wide receiver where Anthony Richardson hit me for a 55-yard pass. Despite my performance, I rarely touched the field my rookie season. I was effective, though, when I did get opportunities. I had seven touchdowns on only 77 carries. In my second season, we made the playoffs after Shane Steichen was fired, and we hired Sean McVay, and I still had the same limited role as my rookie season. I saw limited action, mostly 
mostly as a special teamer. I had one big carry in the third quarter on a stretch to the left side, and I only had one man to beat. But Devin Lloyd brought me down for a two-yard loss, and we ended up losing our wildcard playoff game to the Jaguars. In my third season, surprise, I was still the running back two behind Jonathan Taylor. I think the Colts were seriously considering trading him when they drafted me, and I was the contingency option. But since they worked out their differences, I got shafted and sat on the bench instead of being utilized. This season, we made it to the divisional round against the Browns, and I had been upgraded to the kick returner. I didn't really have any explosive returns in our matchup, and the Browns scored a touchdown to give them the lead with only 14 seconds left, knocking us out of the playoffs again. At this point, I was just actually hoping that I'd be traded already, or that the Colts wouldn't pick up my contract, but since I had 12 rushing touchdowns and only 120 carries my third year, it was unlikely I'd be just straight up cut. I was ecstatic when my agent called and let me know that during the offseason that I would be traded to the Chargers. My only concern was how the team was going to split my carries with Austin Eckler, but it turns out they traded him, so I was going to finally be the running back one. Our season opener was against the Chiefs, who just came off of another Super Bowl win, and I felt like it was our turn to take over the AFC West. Finally, I got to implement what I've been doing as their running back two with more volume, and I knew I could have an all-pro type of season. The Chargers let me be me, and they were happy that I was a great blocker and receiver that could play all three downs on top of the fact that I was a bruising power back. At this point in my career, I would compare myself to just a more athletic and handsome Ramondre Stevenson. In my debut game against the Chiefs, I made a lot of Chargers fans happy about trading for me. I broke off another huge run to average nearly seven yards per carry with 70 rushing yards before the end of the first half. But Justin Herbert was having some struggles. He threw an interception to a linebacker that was lurking on a slant route, and we were already down 7-13 in the third quarter. I was also a great decoy as the defense focused in on me and left the RPO wide open for Quentin Johnston. And I had my best run of my career up to this point against the Chiefs to give us a 21-19 lead as I took it in for a 30-yard rushing touchdown. The Chiefs scored twice unanswered and regained a two-touchdown lead over us despite how well I was running the ball. I continued to showcase my skill set, and I was likely making some Colts fans pissed about their front office's decision to trade me. I got split out at wide receiver again and completely cooked the corner, taking it into the end zone for my second touchdown of the game. With 20 seconds, though, it wouldn't be enough, and we'd start our season with an L. I think that loss stuck with us because midway through the season, we had a 1-6 record before our game against the Broncos, and rumors were swirling about Brandon Staley's job being on the line after another disappointing season, so he was in a bad mood every practice and every game. I didn't really blame him that much, though, because we had the talent on this roster to be competing for a Super Bowl, but a 1-6 record shouldn't even be possible with this squad. I was having a great year individually, though, so I didn't really know how to feel. We were down 16-3 in the fourth, again, despite how well I was actually running the ball. Finally, we started to get some momentum on offense, and we got down into the red zone, where I ended up being in the flat, and I caught a ball and flipped over defenders as I dove into the end zone, adding another highlight to the mixtape and putting even more Meadows jerseys on fans. We got the ball back with 20 seconds left and no timeouts, but we didn't do enough to get a touchdown, and we walked out with our seventh loss of the season, most likely cementing Staley being fired, and we were looking at getting a top five pick in the draft instead of a top five seeding in the playoffs like we had expected. I had gotten so much better as a player after just one year as a starter. I wish that I had gotten that opportunity straight out of the draft, but everything happens for a reason, I guess. I ended up winning the 2027 Running Back of the Year for the AFC, which finally gave me some validation as a top running back in the league in every aspect. I think what I bring in terms of versatility is what sets me apart, and I also got extended for three more years to play with the Chargers, making about seven mil per year. We had the fourth pick in the draft after having a terrible season, and we ended up drafting a dog at corner, Lorenzo Burks, six foot three, super fast, and in the mold of Tariq Woolen. After winning the award for best running back, I proposed to my longtime girlfriend, Asa Akira, and we got married before the season opener against the Browns, where I showed my continued development as a playmaker, despite the fact that I was already 30 at running back. The biggest boost we got in the offseason besides the draft was that we signed Kyle Shanahan to be our new head coach to replace Brandon Staley, and it turned out to be just the right move as we turned the team around from 4-13 to 11-6. Capped off by our final game against the Falcons, where I decimated their defense early and often with multiple 60-plus yard runs and two touchdowns as well. I had another career year with 13 rushing touchdowns and nearly 1,600 rushing yards, along with almost 500 receiving yards. Caleb Godwin, our number one wide receiver, who was in the same draft class as me, also had a great 16 touchdown season. Our wildcard game came against the Ravens, and Kyle Shanahan would put me in every position imaginable. Pause. I lined up at wide receiver in the slot and as a traditional halfback. I do have to give a shout out to the O-line in this game especially, though there were gaping holes up the middle, leaving me 10 yards of space before seeing a single defender, and I was just bouncing off of guys, juking guys out, and literally nobody on the Ravens defense could stop me. I might actually be the best blocking running back in the league, but it didn't matter as Justin Herbert threw up a one-on-one -on -one ball that got intercepted in the back of the end zone while we were only up 3-0. 
I continued to put the team on my back though, ripping off a 20 yard run with three defenders on my back. And then we ended up getting into the red zone again. And on third down, I lined up at wide receiver. I ran a short out and I caught the ball at the one yard line. I was ruled out of bounds. So on fourth and goal, we went for it and I dunked it over defender to get into the end zone for our first touchdown of the game. Baltimore scored and we were down one with two minutes left and coach drew up a perfect pick play to get Palmer wide open. If I'm being honest, I definitely should have gotten offensive pass interference on this play, but we're just not going to talk about that. Instead of being conservative though, once we got into the red zone and taking the game winning field goal, I popped into the end zone for another touchdown. We moved on to the divisional where we would play against our division rival, the Chiefs. This would be our best opportunity to finally dethrone the Chiefs in the playoffs that we've ever had. We were playing in Arrowhead Stadium in a snow game though, so it was a little bit weird, but after my performance versus the Ravens, coach told me that I'd be getting the ball every play on our first possession. It felt like everyone around me was moving in slow motion. I'm not sure if it was the snow or that I was just reading the defense that well, but everything felt like it was coming really easily to me. And the blocks were just lining up perfectly. Once we got into the red zone, the Chiefs knew who was getting the ball, but they just couldn't stop me. On first and goal, I nearly got into the end zone, but fell down right at the goal line. And on the very next play, I dove into the end zone for our first touchdown of the game. We felt unstoppable after that initial touchdown, but fast forward to three minutes left in the fourth, and we had scored zero points after that touchdown, and we were down 10 with the ball. The ball had gotten knocked loose on third down, and then on fourth down, I ended up calling for the ball again, and Herbert got baited by me into an interception that got returned for a touchdown, and that would be the end of our season in the divisional. I hadn't mentioned this up to this point, but it was great having my mom and my wife at every home game and every playoff game. Even if my dad couldn't be there, I still had them supporting me no matter what the outcome was. Again, I felt like I was at my peak as a 32-year-old running back, but I was a little bit hurt when the Chargers drafted Jerry Allen, a running back out of Michigan State, with their first round pick. I had another season with about 1,800 all-purpose yards and 12 total touchdowns, but we missed the playoffs again. We drafted a linebacker in the first round, and then the following year, I put up career-high numbers in a few different categories, averaging over 5 yards per carry, with nearly 1,600 rushing yards again, and 10 rushing touchdowns. But we had started the year with a 1-6 record that we couldn't recover from to make the playoffs, and so we underperformed for a second year in a row, despite arguably having my best year ever. I ended up being cut from the roster at age 34, and somehow I couldn't sign with any other team in the league, forcing me to retire. My wife and I ended up having two kids, Jordan Asa Meadows and Bradley Meadows Jr. in honor of my father. I'm not sure what's next for me in my career. I could go back to being a military officer, or I could take up coaching, but I haven't made up my mind. For now, I think I'm just going to enjoy my time with my kids. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this uh, series in the comments. I appreciate everybody for watching. Look out for a new series coming up with a defensive end from Romania named Arlo Karamova, who's playing in Florida. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.